national scandal. Gustavo Petro, the president who dreams of a Nobel Peace Prize while the country sinks into chaos, is now completely discredited. He promised crowds and popular support, but all he got was a Plaza de Bolivar emptier than his own leadership. And as if that wasn't enough, he made up a little cold to cover up his colossal failure. While guerrillas and narcos take control of Colombia, Petro keeps playing the revolutionary, hoping for an international award that will never come. The country is falling apart, and he only thinks about his own ego. October 2015 of 2024, a day when Gustavo Petro eagerly awaited, with almost childlike excitement, the call from the Swedish Academy to find out that his efforts for peace had made him worthy of the Nobel Peace Prize. However, as they say in Colombia, he was left watching a sparkler. The prize went to others, and Petro was left with a sadness he could not hide. But why this desperation for the Nobel? Why did Petro feel like the perfect Sid? It turns out that the Colombian president has been selling his image as a peacemaker since taking office. His agreements with the guerrillas, his total peace approach, and his promise of reconciliation all seem to have a price. The president's ego needs international accolades to keep going. So, seeing that peace in Colombia is more fictional than the characters in a telenovela, Petro clings to the prize like someone grasping a lifeline in the middle of the sea. However, things did not go as expected. Instead of applause, the president found himself facing an empty square, without marchers, without support, and without a prize. Last Friday, Petro had called for a great mobilization in favor of his government, promising that the streets would be filled with supporters. But when the moment of truth arrived, the Plaza de Bolivar was as empty as the dignity in Congress. Neither the victims of the Union Patriotica nor Petro's fervent followers showed up, leaving the president with a forced smile and a last-minute excuse, a supposed cold. Ah, the old reliable. Every time Petro fails to meet his commitments, a little cold saves him from embarrassment, but no one believes him anymore. The truth is that Petro is more frightened than a cat in a bucket of water. His policies have failed, insecurity is on the rise, and the drug trade is overwhelming the country. So, instead of facing reality, the president prefers to invent illnesses to avoid the crowds that no longer support him. Meanwhile, his cabinet is not far behind in this tragic comedy. In the same week that Colombia burned from FARC attacks in Caca, Laura Sarabia, Petro's right-hand woman, strolled through the streets of El Plateado as if she were in a fashion show. Bulletproof vest, selfie in hand, and a broad smile. Sarabia seemed to enjoy her tour, while the civilian population suffered the ravages of the armed conflict. And what about Francia Marquez, the vice president? Well, she doesn't stay behind in this show either. She called for a demonstration in her hometown, Santander de Quilichao, to continue the narrative of change. The result? Emptier than a nightclub on a Monday morning. The few who attended had their chairs removed by the logistics team, while Francia tried to maintain her dignity with speeches of resistance and struggle. But let's get back to Petro. The president's obsession with the Nobel Peace Prize is nothing new. Since taking office, Petro has been toying with the idea of being Colombia's peacemaker, even though the facts on the ground tell a different story. The peace agreements are more broken than a politician's campaign promises, and the guerrillas continue to control vast regions of the country. How can a president who doesn't even control half the territory aspire to such a prestigious award? The answer is simple. It's all for show. Petro knows he needs to keep the image of a peacemaker alive for the international public, even when his own people no longer buy the narrative. In his government, reality has taken a back seat. What matters is how things look, not how they are. The selfies, the empty marches, the grandiose speeches, everything is part of a performance to keep the hope of a recognition that will clearly never come alive. While Petro keeps waiting for a call that will never arrive, Colombia continues to suffer the consequences of his poor governance. The country is flooded with coca, the drug trade thrives, and violence continues to claim lives in regions like Caca. The total peace that the president preaches is nothing more than a mirage, an illusion that fades with each new attack, each new act of corruption, each new lie. And the Nobel? Well, someone else won that, while Petro is left with the worst legacy a president can leave, a divided, impoverished, and hopeless country. Maybe instead of worrying so much about international awards, the president should start doing what really matters, governing for his people before it's too late. Well, let's take a look at Gustavo Petro, our dear leader of the coffee revolution, who never ceases to amaze us. The man no longer knows what excuse to come up with to hide when the country slips out of his hands. A cold, mercury and retrograde, or maybe the remote control broke. What a shameless attitude. It's clear that Petro thinks governing is like doing a TikTok live stream, without preparation, without an audience, and most importantly, without common sense. Let's start with the story of the Nobel Peace Prize. Oh, Petro, 
Petro, that ego of yours doesn't even fit in the Casa de Nariño. Where did this man get the idea that he was about to win the Nobel when he can't even handle a cold? How does he think he can solve Colombia's problems, let alone bring world peace? It's ridiculous. The man keeps believing that everything wrong in his government is the fault of neoliberalism. But when something goes somewhat right, all the applause goes to him. And of course, since he didn't get his prize, now he's sulking in the corner, waiting for someone to console him. The Plaza de Bolivar incident was the icing on the cake. Petro called for a rally, expecting to be followed as if he were the reincarnated Bolivar. And what happened? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Not even a breeze stirred. The Plaza de Bolivar was lonelier than a drunken church. Not even his own supporters paid him any attention. And it's not to belittle him. But when even the buses full of people brought in for the show don't bother to listen to the president's speech, that's a sign that the ship is sinking. Petro wanted a popular revolution, but all he got was an echo in the empty plaza. And of course, when it's time to show his face at important events, he pulls out the brilliant excuse of having a cold. Oh, please. A cold? No one, not even the most naive, believes that anymore. While Kaka burns, while the drug lords divide up the land and drones strike, Petro stays in bed, sipping agua panela with lemon. It's unbelievable, like a captain deciding to take a nap in the middle of a storm. The country is on fire, Mr. President, and you're hiding behind a cold. And let's not forget Laura Sarabia's show. Wow, the bulletproof vest was too much for her. The woman went to Kaka, a place where gorillas run the show, as if she were on a field trip. And of course, she snapped some nice selfies, looking all secure in her vest, while the rest of the Colombians there don't have anything to fall back on, thanks to the policies of her boss. But there they are, smiling for the camera, because in Petro's government, everything is an Instagram postcard, a pantomime of the reality lived by millions of Colombians. The saddest part of all this is that while they take selfies and hide behind ridiculous excuses, the country continues to crumble. The FARC, or rather, the dissidents, control half the territory. And Petro, instead of confronting them, offers them peace. But not just any peace. It's the kind of peace that lets criminals do whatever they want. Peace for them, war for us. And for Petro, the solution to the drug trade problem seems to be turning a blind eye. What a brilliant strategy. It's sure to work in some parallel universe. But wait, the story continues. The ex-FARC are now in Congress, asking for more impunity. Yes, folks. The same people who committed all kinds of atrocities now want to be left in peace, have all their crimes forgiven, and on top of that, continue to collect their fat congressional salaries. It's hard to know whether to laugh or cry in this country. And Petro, of course, looks the other way. Heaven forbid he catches another cough. What's most worrying is that while Petro sinks into his fantasy world, the country is worse off than ever. The drug lords divide up the land as if it were a marketplace, the guerrillas advance, and the government spends millions on empty events that have no real impact. The president is more lost than a tourist on Transmillennio. And meanwhile, we keep paying the price. Honestly, Petro is taking things to the limit. He wants to play the revolutionary, the people's savior, but the reality is that he can't even control his own cabinet. He gets sick when he has to appear, hides when the country is in crisis, and dreams of international awards that will never come. Because, of course, what Petro thinks he's doing is one thing, and what's actually happening is something else entirely. But anyway, there he is. Petro the Nobel hopeful. Petro with his cold. Petro the self-proclaimed savior, who can't even fill a plaza. Meanwhile, the country drifts aimlessly, without leadership, and worst of all, without hope. Gustavo Petro continues to show that his leadership is not only disconnected from reality, but his obsession with international recognition has caused him to lose sight of what truly matters, the well-being of Colombia. As the country sinks deeper into the chaos of violence, insecurity, and drug trafficking, the president clings to absurd excuses and feeds his ego with unreachable dreams like the Nobel Peace Prize. His empty rallies and lack of control over guerrillas and territory are just the tip of the iceberg of a government that is falling apart. At the end of the day, Petro's spectacle is laid bare, a hollow media show without substance that cannot hide the grave crisis the country is going through. The empty Plaza de Bolivar reflects what remains of his popular support, an illusion. While Petro keeps waiting for a call that will never come, Colombia suffers the consequences of erratic and disconnected leadership. If you want to stay informed about how the country continues to face the consequences of Petro's mismanagement and don't want to miss any of our uncensored analysis, subscribe to our channel right now. Turn on the notification bell so you never miss any of our upcoming videos. Like, share, and join this community that stands for the truth.